Hello everyone, Insane Frame here and welcome back to another Fallout Challenge. In our last video we used T-45 power armor with no weapons, just the T-45 armor. Let's try a more difficult challenge. In this video we asked the question, can you be Fallout 4 with a walking cane? So with the gauntlet set, let's explain the rules. We can only use the walking cane as a weapon. We may only attack using a walking cane. No glitches or exploits and no mod in the game's files. And we're going to be playing on normal difficulty. With all the rules set, let's get into it. We go straight into character creation and we look like an elderly man. And we also give the treatment to Nora as well. Hey, Nora. Vault tick then call and we decide our stats and call ourselves D Kane. We decide to go for 7 strength, endurance and agility along with 4 luck, making a nice balanced melee build. With all that done, the news reports happens and we have to run to the vault and shortly after we head down the elevator and we then get frozen and just as much we watch Nora's story develop and end in a flash as our sausage roll son gets taken by Kellogg Cornflakes for a balanced breakfast. We then run through the rad roaches and lock them out and then take the pit boy and unlock the vault to the outside world, gazing upon it for the first time, realising it's a wasteland. We then proceed to Sanctuary Hills and go back to our house and get our special book, increasing our agility by one, making a total of eight agility. We also grab Gronach the Barbarian comic, helping our melee damage out very slightly, as any additional help is very, very decent. We then quickly head to the truck stop, getting dog meat as a companion, and then we head to Trudy's Diner for a very awkward encounter with a couple of raiders. We can't attack unless we have a walking stick, which we don't, but dog meat can attack and so can Trudy, so they both take them out without any serious problems, and we pretty much do the only thing we can, um, just watch them get decimated. We level up and take Aqua Boy, which will be a huge help to us in the early game. And it's going to help us where we need to go, as water is now our friend, and we can't drown, and we no longer take any radiation damage from swimming in water. We also pick up Tales of a Jerky Town vendor, as, once again, every little helps in this game. And this building in particular has water behind it and that is the start of the river heading out into the ocean so we do exactly that and start swimming and we continue until we get to the old amphitheater which just so happens to have two walking canes so we pick up our walking cane and now we can attack we quickly go back to the truck stop and upgrade our walking cane to a barbed wire walking cane this is the weapon we will be using for the rest of the run. It really can't be upgraded any further than this, but it's the best we got, so we make do. We then quickly go to Diamond City and test our walking cane on some super mutants. We level up in the process and get the armor perk rank 1. So with the armor perk, we can upgrade most of our armor, but this will become very important later on. We then get to the entrance of Diamond City and Piper is doing her regular speech as usual but it gets the gate open and we walk straight on in. We also do Piper's interview, keeping it positive for the most part. After all, she was nice enough to get the gate open. We then go to Nick Valentine's detective agency and speak to his assistant, Ellie. We have to go rescue Nick from Skilly Malone and his trigger-happy gang members. But we level up and get the big league's perk rank 1, meaning we do an additional 20% more damage with melee weapons, which is absolutely fantastic. However, sidetracking from the main quest, we need some armor, and of course the best armor is free, so Aqua Boy comes in handy once again as we swim all the way to Jamaica Plains. After dying a few times, we make it to the top of the church and find a sleeping bag inside, and this helps regain our hit points. We also encounter a Mr. Gutsy with one arm, which I have to confess I've never actually seen before in the game, because they usually have free arms, but this guy is kind of unique, I guess. Anyway, we go back to the church, take out some ghouls whilst also levelling up, and get in a perk called Id Idiot Savant. Since we have one intelligence, this will be helping us an awful lot. Anyway, now for the reason we actually came to Jamaica Plains in the first place, we take out some ghouls, mainly by sneak attacking, and use our criticals. 
But then we find a person named Sol who has exactly what we are looking for, a full suit of combat armor. This helps us in leaps and bounds and will definitely aid us in a monumental way, especially in the early game. It's time to go rescue Nick, so we decide to go to the Triggerman hideout and our combat armor holds up no problem, making this fairly easy whilst we're being very cautious not to take machine gun fire. We eventually get to Nick and we agree to help him out and shortly after we run into Skinny Malone and Dala. We simply use Vats and we manage to make this fight swing in our favour along with having Nick and the cute and adorable dog meat. We get back to Nick's office and answer Nick's questions and we then go to Kellogg Cornflake's house which is locked but we pickpocket the key from the mayor and gain access. Following this we press the button under the table and open up an awesome little secret room which means we can start tracking Kellogg Cornflakes. At this point in the story it is very important we have our base stats in order so we grind a little and max out our strength and we also gain Idiot Savant rank 2. This will help with our level ups in the future and it makes grinding a hell of a lot easier. Anywho, with our grinding done, we head to Fort Hagen with Dogmeat. We also find some armor for Dogmeat and hand it to him. And then we go and beat Kellogg's personal army of simps, a few turrets, and we finally get to Kellogg Cornflakes and confront him. We meet him and talk. He's charming as always, but we beat him like it's October in 2077 in Fallout. Upon beating Kellogg with a barbed wire walking cane, we can see on his terminal, Sean or father, whatever you prefer, has been given to the Institute. And we also go outside and see the Brotherhood have arrived on their cool looking ship, the Pridewin. We then loot Kellogg and head to the memory den with his implants and start the memory sequence. Thankfully, you can skip most of the memory sequence and get to the very end and learn of Brian Virgil, a former Institute scientist. He's living out in the glowing sea and it's our job to go find him and find out where the Institute is. We travel to the glowing sea with a bunch of Radaway and Rad X whilst beating many ghouls along with some pesky Rad Scorpions and then we even get a Death Claw. All I can say is thank god for alcohol boosting your strength in this game and a little bit of buff out for once again improving strength and endurance. We use that and a critical hit which does significant damage and we actually manage to beat back the Death Claw and defeat it by drinking alcohol of all things okay we then meet up with virgil and he says we need to be a institute corsair so we head to the cit building and get met with a lot of gunners and we beat them one by one get a new bandana for dog meat and we eventually get to the corsair after facing down all the gunners we tag team against the Corsair with Dogmeat and use our walking cane to beat him mercilessly. He's actually pretty easily beaten thanks to Dogmeat and we even managed to rescue a synth called Jenny who just simply runs around, I guess. Next, we see Dr. Amari in Good Neighbor in the memory den who mentions the railroad. And we proceed to the North Church and go to the basement and punch in the code RAILROAD. And then we meet Desmona, along with Glory and Drummer Boy. We cooperate as much as possible, giving them exactly what they ask of us. And then we meet Tinker Tom, who decides he wants to decode the Corsa chip. And Desmona asks what we think of Simps, and we give her a positive reception. Um, Deacon also lets us know he needs a partner for a mission, and we accept the job to fast track us into the railroad. But first, we have to head to Virgil, and he is impressed with what we have done, and gives us the blueprints for the teleport to get to the Institute. We then get back to Deacon and go on a mission with him, and get Tinker Tom's device, and we then get recruited as a railroad agent, and go with the codename Chama. It's then high time we get to construct the teleporter in our settlement. We improve the settlement's infrastructure and add a concrete wall along the outer perimeter, along with a lot of turrets on some platforms, just in case anybody tries to destroy our settlement and make Tinker Tom nervous. We also build the teleporter and Desmona begins monologuing about what we have to do. Stepping on the teleporter, we are teleported into the Institute, and upon arriving, we put on our suit for a good first impression and become Agent D. Charmer Kane. Genuinely, I, I didn't know Charmer was an available codename, but apparently we are a heavy with a barbed wire walking cane, so let's just roll with it. Anyway, we upload the holotape and use the lift whilst Father monologues about the Institute, and Agent Charmer descends. We then meet with the child Semp, and Father reveals he is Sean, and we both look like a similar age group. Not going to lie, this is quite strange, but cool, in a weird way. 
but we follow Desmona's advice and respond to Father in a very positive way. We then meet with Patriot in a storage cupboard, whose name is Liam Bennett, and we then meet with Z114, who is a simp, who wants us to release a large group of simps in one go, but we need to get a pre-war password. We also uphold our word with Virgil and grab his serum, and shortly after, we meet with all the Institute directors, and we also get a Corsa chip installed on our pit boy, which is awesome, because that allows us to go, come and go as we please from the Institute. We go straight back to Desmona and port what we saw. She wants us to make a entry on a terminal next to Pam, and we get straight on it. We then have to work on getting the pre-war password for the Institute, and after a few twists and turns with Deacon, we manage to get the password. We then go back to a railroad safe house to meet an Institute courser and mostly beat him in submission. We then head outside and beat a second courser into submission. Honestly, I, re I really don't know why the Institute puts so much stock into these guys, but hey, let's continue. We report back to Desmona and she has a tall order. Rather than save the original group of simps, she decides she wants to save all the simps. A bold order nonetheless, but one I personally agree with. And we also hit level 25, giving us the armor rank 3. This allows us to use Ballistic Weave up to level 4, which is awesome because Ballistic Weave allows you to make clothes that aren't normally damage resistant, get some major defense upgrades. This is a huge plus, so we make a Ballistic Weave suit for us, and we also make one for Deacon. I know the army fatigues are probably better, but we just look so good and it we are agent charmer after all so with our new ballistic suit we go to z114 and he is updated on the new plan we are then to wait 24 hours so we go to the cafeteria and just simply wait for 24 hours we then give patriot or liam whatever you want to call him the pre-war password the institute then give us a mission to go to bunker hill and deal with the railroad we meet up with a Corsa as our bodyguard. We encounter a little bit of a problem as the Brotherhood of Steel are there and they have power armor. Our walking cane does very little damage to the power armor other than us using vats. But besides the point, we use a lot of healing items and with a bit of persistence, we do manage to beat the Brotherhood of Steel in a battle of attrition. After that close match, we get into the basement of Bunker Hill from the marketplace. When we get to the basement and pass a crossfire, we find four simps, and they are absolutely terrified of us. And we decide to let them go and begin destroying the Corsa, because the, I don't know why the Institute puts so much stock into these guys, but he's really easy to beat. After all is said and done, we reach Father atop some ruins and speak to him, and we find out that he's the one that actually unfroze us, and curious as to what we would do. But he's also furious at the result of Bunker Hill, but thanks to the Brotherhood, um, they actually covered our story and now we need to attend a director's meeting. I think we are doing an absolutely amazing job as a railroad agent. As an agent of the railroad, the Institute discusses their most sensitive information, including phase three, which would be the activation of a nuclear reactor. Father then states he is unwell and that he is dying, so he appoints us as his successor. And that concludes the meeting. FYI, father has just put a railroad spy or agent as the next leader of the institute this is madness and it is too good to be true we then deposit more weapons for our simp colleagues and we speak to ali the head of engineering she wants to go to the surface and accompany agent d charmer and agent deacon to get a item we arrive at the mass fusion building and we take on the brotherhood once more on our way to the reactor we also commandeer some t60 power armor from a brotherhood of steel knight we face more brotherhood of steel personnel then take the power armor to the reactor we then take the beryllium agitator and we then leave the t60 power armor we then have to face a securiton droid and two assaultrons we take some psycho to prepare for the fight and that increases our damage by 25 percent we nearly die but we manage to walk away and we also get critical banker letting us use two criticals in combat now we then return to the Institute, and we are debriefed by Father, who is proud of us, and still unaware of our intents. 
Another meeting is then called, but this time we get to chair the meeting as a railroad agent. I think it's fair to say we are doing a fantastic job as a railroad agent. <laughs> to our surprise, the Institute wants to go to war with the Brotherhood, which is exactly what we wanted to hear. And we increase synth production to help our rebellion, but also to help the war effort, while none are the wiser. We then talk to Z114 and he lets us know that the Brotherhood of Steel know the railroad's location. We hightail it back to Railroad HQ and we let Desmona know about the Institute's plan to assassinate her. We then also let her know that the Brotherhood know the base's location, proving we are truly loyal to the railroad. We then get the Brotherhood breaching into the Railroad's HQ and, to be honest, we destroy them fairly easily. Deacon also takes a minigun from the Brotherhood Knight, just god bless this man we see glory dying and we promise her to save all the sims and agent deacon walks in and agrees we drink some wine to improve our strength and we begin flushing out the brotherhood of steel knights from railroad hq we then talk to desmona in the church she wants us to find a vertebrate and take the fight to the brotherhood and begin operation red glare we go to the Cambridge Police Station and take out the Brotherhood of Steel soldiers with Agent Deacon. We speak to Tom and he says the station is crawling with Brotherhood of Steel soldiers. But we go straight to the roof to get the vertebrae because we've already killed them. And upon arriving to the roof, Tom gives us some explosives to use on the Priden before we get there. But we can't celebrate yet because more Brotherhood of Steel soldiers arrive from a vertebrae. We deal with the soldiers in power armor and we have a problem as... We can't attack the vertebrate as per the rules, so it's up to Agent Deacon to take down the vertebrate with his rifle. It takes a while, but eventually the vertebrate does crash and we get to board the stolen vertebrate on the roof. Now, as per the rules, we are not allowed to use the gun on the vertebrate, so we can only sit there until we get to the Priden. When we get to the Priden, we have even more personnel on the hangar deck and we get to work dispatching the personnel. We then get inside the Priden and have a ridiculous fight. We hit and run for most of the fight and take some healing items and we just keep pushing back the Brotherhood of Steel piece by piece and we even have to reload the fight a couple of times but we eventually manage to take out a few soldiers, push them back and take the fight from the Brotherhood. Note to self, a cane is not a good weapon against the Brotherhood of Steel people but we place the explosives and try to get away. But Elder Maxon is waiting for us with two soldiers, one with a missile launcher and one with a minigun. And I believe he has a laser Gatling gun. But we managed to beat down Elder Maxon in an absolutely amazing fashion. We board the Vertebird once again and we watch the Pride and explode in absolutely glorious fashion. We then go ahead and report to Desmona and she wants us to now take the fight to the Institute. We meet with Z114 and quickly deal with the guards at the entrance so we can teleport our friends in. Desmona arrives and then hands us a bomb to put on a reactor. We immediately head into the tunnels and begin our attack. We beat a few simps in the tunnels and get to the back entrance into Bioscience. We also get to fight some gorillas and then we wait for everybody to destroy the turrets because we don't have a ranged weapon so we have to wait for the NPCs to shoot them. We go to the main plaza and wipe out even more simps and Tinker Tom says we need to get the door open. So this procs us to go to father's room and we see him dying and he really isn't happy with us. We do a back and forth, but um, we issue a evacuation order from his terminal and save the sims, and then we lift the lockdown as well. We then head over to the reactor and destroy some more units, and go to the reactor and plant the bomb. We then get teleported to the Institute entrance, and our simp son calls out to us, the one we met who it is we thought was Sean, but then father revealed himself. Anyway, we let him come with us and we are teleported once more to the detonation site with Agent Deacon and Desmona. We push the button and that ends the run, which answers the question, yes, you can beat Fallout 4 with just the walking cane as your only weapon. Well, that was a brutal run, but it was a lot of fun and true to the point, I've never actually completed the game with the railroad before. I've got to say, it was a pretty cool storyline. But it's safe to say the Brotherhood of Steel were definitely the most difficult faction to deal with, just simply because our damage output wasn't all that great against them. But it did pose a challenge, and that's all part of the fun. Also, I'd like to say I'm very, I'm really sorry this video was late, but um, thanks for being decent about it, and I hope you enjoyed it. I, I know I sure did, but our next Fallout challenge is going to be just as brutal. We're going to go back to New Vegas and see 
can we beat the game using only Benny's pistol Maria? So like the video if you like the video, comment down below, and if you have any ideas or anything, I'd love to hear them. Subscribe if you're new, and I've been Insane Frame. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an excellent day, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.